I am performing transthoracic echocardiography in a patient who was taken in ICU with the symptoms of congestive heart failure. Earlier she was diagnosed with primary pulmonary hypertension. I was asked to make dynamic echocardiographic assessment of this patient after she has received intensive treatment, dobutamine, furosemid, posantan, etc. This patient was included in the trial and I was asked to measure all necessary parameters. As usual, we start our assessment from parasternal long axis view, but in this case it is difficult to obtain standard parasternal view. This patient has very large right chambers and the left chambers are displaced. Therefore, I obtain intermediate view where I could take all necessary measures. Left atrium 3.5 cm, normal size. Ascending aorta 3.5 cm, normal size. Left ventricle, small cavity. Two point eight centimeters. The interventricular septum is hypertrophied, 1.7 cm. Posterior left ventricular wall, 1.3 cm, also moderately hypertrophied. The right ventricle is significantly dilated. Four point six centimeters. Please know that the right ventricular wall is significantly hypertrophied. We can see it in the cases of severe pulmonary hypertension, the thickness of right ventricular wall 1 cm. We can measure this parameter so clearly because this patient also has a fluid in pericardial cavity. The collection of fluid behind the posterior left ventricular wall 1.7 cm. The collection of fluid near the interior right ventricular wall 0.7 cm. So this patient has moderate quantity of fluid in the pericardial cavity as a result of congestive heart failure. But there are no signs of tamponade because we do not see diastolic left atrial, right atrial or right ventricular collapse. After taking measurements we start to assess mitral well and aortic well. Please pay attention to color Doppler scale. Now it is not set correctly. Therefore, before we use of the color Doppler, we must change the setting of the scale. Now the scale is set correctly. Now we enlarge the color box and set the color flow across the mitral well. The mitral well in this patient is normal. Now we assess the aortic well. The cusps of aortic well are normal. Now we use the color Doppler and see normal laminar blood flow across the aortic well. But we can see significant tricuspid regurgitation as a result of severe pulmonary hypertension. Now we assess the left ventricular systolic function. The interventricular septum is moving paradoxically and participates in the contraction of right ventricle. But in spite of this, the left vent ventricle contracts normally and the ejection fraction is normal. And the cavity of the left ventricle is small. If we compare the contractility of the left ventricle and right ventricle, we see that the right ventricular contractility is significantly reduced. According to my eyeball assessment, the right ventricular ejection fraction is not more than 30%. But the assessment of right ventricular ejection fraction is not a simple task. It is more difficult than the assessment of left ventricular ejection fraction.
Now we obtain the apical foot chamber view. Please take a note how much larger are right chambers compared to left chambers. Right ventricle and right atrium are significantly dilated and interatrial septum is displaced in the left as a result of higher pressure in the right atrium. And the movement of interventricular septum is paradoxical and it participates in right ventricular systole. Now we assess again the tricuspid regurgitation. Vena contracta zero point seven centimeters. It suggests the presence of significant tricuspid regurgitation. Now we measure the peak gradient across the tricuspid well. Now we are correcting the scale of continuous wave Doppler. Once more we are trying to obtain the gradient. We align the Doppler beam through the well center. The peak gradient is 149 millimeters of mercury, so this patient has a suprasystemic pressure in the pulmonary artery. This is typical for late stages of primary pulmonary hypertension. Now we use the standard method of assessment of right ventricular systolic function, TAPSE. In this method we measure tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion. We activate the M mode and align the beam across the lateral part of the tricuspid well ring. We measure distance from this point to this point, 1.5 cm. This is abnormal. It should be more than 2 cm, so the right ventricular systolic function is depressed. Now we activate the tissue Doppler function. I put the tissue Doppler sample volume on the lateral part of the cuspid well ring and measure the tissue velocity. Twelve point five centimeters per second. This parameter is also reduced. It should be more than fourteen fifteen centimeters per second. So I assess the right ventricular ejection fraction somewhere in the region of thirty thirty five persons. I performed the transthoracic echocardiography in this patient seven days ago, and now we have positive dynamic. Then the tapse was eight centimeters, and tissue Doppler velocity was 8.3 cm per second, so we have a positive dynamic of right ventricular systolic function after the course of intensive treatment. Now we obtain the short axis view. Please note that the heart anatomy is significantly deformed. The left ventricular cavity is very small and the right ventricular cavity is very large. Look at the shape of the left ventricle and interventricular septum. The interventricular septum is flattened. This is indication of the very high pressure in the right ventricle. 
and interventricular septum participates in the systole of the right ventricle. And take a note of the fluid around the heart.